from getting fried, going to get crunk. Yeah. Yeah. Head back to Longview, Kelly popping trunk. Yeah. I ain't even tripping, yeah. riding and I'm sipping. Yeah. Yeah. Let me come through, four foes, steady tipping. Yeah. 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 Let me yeah. yeah. watch the trunk crack. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, see me running back. Yeah. Maybe AP, yeah. maybe AD. Yeah. I ain't even tripping because we some athletes. Yeah. Messing with Smitty yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. He get pissed if we don't make our time. Yeah. But we gon' get it because we got to finish. Yeah. Nebraska horn hustles, man, we diminish. Yeah. Put them a little. Yeah. I ain't like a Skittle. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. I ain't never double dribble because yeah. I'm a player from the Himalaya. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, man. Maybe back door. Yeah. Maybe fall off. Yeah. Sipping codeine because I got to kill the cow. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the big bins. Oh, you boys, they my brothers, they my friends. All right, all right, welcome into Fullback U. This is going to be an amazing episode. I'm going to call it right now. He's been summoned to the pod by many of his former teammates. Uh, and they've been uh, not really incriminated him in too many stories, but uh, it was a great teammate of mine. My brother, Reggie Smith, how you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing, man? Doing good. You got to let everybody know what, uh, what you're up to these days. Uh, right now, I'm living out in Glendale, Arizona, uh, working in operations. Uh, I think Q was on a couple weeks ago uh, talking about So we were working at the same company, uh, Chewy uh, Distribution Center for uh, pet food and toys, things of that nature. So it's been good so far. Yeah, let's get right to it, brother. Uh, where's our DBs, Rich? Uh, I know you got some feelings on the dog. Where, where's what? What's been going on with them? Uh, what do you see these days? Is it the same as when you played? Let me know. I mean, I it's it's tough to say. I can't really say this based upon what I see, just because. What I see is different than what, you know, I would do if I got there. But it's, it, you can't really tell because it's different coaching, different stuff of that nature. But I just feel like at times when they do get in that put and put in a situation that have to be manned up or, you know, one-on-one situations, instead of turning to look for the ball to actually play it, a lot of times they just either get the P.I. or, you know, don't ever look back. So – and then big plays happen. So it's just a thing that's been, you know – going on for a few years i just stay out of it but i think they're doing a great job trying to turn it around and whatnot real walk me through you know how's a guy from edmund get to ou walk me through your recruiting story who'd you turn down why'd you eventually come to us i know some of the reasons but uh hopefully <laughs> tell, tell me some things that i don't know man it was it was a long one i mean i remember going through it and you know i was uh i think it started my sophomore year when i went to ou for their camp and when i did kind of well i think robert make and a whole bunch of guys were there Whew. so it was kind of good to do well while they were there. But uh, when I was going through the recruit process, it, I shrinked it down to about three schools when it got down to it. And I only took, what, two visits? Well, three, if you count all you. I mean, but it's right down the street, so I didn't really count it as an official. I was always down there. But uh, it got down to Nebraska, USC, and uh, OU. Reason for Nebraska was mainly because of – a lot of it was because of Coach Blake, you know, a former mm-hmm. OU coach. So, I mean, he was an amazing coach, you know, and they were giving me a lot of opportunities to possibly do both sides of the ball. So, that was one of the things that was very intriguing about that. Uh, USC, obviously, they just got out the national championship with OU. So, it's like I couldn't go wrong with either one, I didn't think at the time. But uh, ultimately, you know, I just stayed home. I think uh, my folks kind of wanted me to stay there, which is fine. And – um I think I had a better opportunity to get started right away because I think they had just we what Dante and B Pool I think were mm-hmm. just leaving right so yep, I would have yep, an opportunity yep. to actually compete. I think I was playing safety at the time, so that's what was my thought process going into it. And then on actual signing day, brought two uh, letters from Tenney and the USC's and uh, OU's, and mm. just ultimately stayed home. Man, that's what's up. And I don't, you know, us offensive guys don't like to give y'all defensive guys credit, but you had some juice with the ball in your hands. So did OU not talk about uh, playing you on O and then talk about your role at OU like early on? And I'll, I'll tell you a story afterwards, but uh, just talk about your role early, just, you know, how they developed you as a guy that could eventually play all five positions in a D, uh, as a DB. Yeah, I mean, it, it was crazy because I knew a lot of schools wanted me for either corner or Safety to somewhere in the defensive backfield, just because I guess I had, I was in a tweener, I guess you could say, too small for a big safety, but too big for a corner. But my footwork was pretty well, pretty good. So uh, they brought me in as a corner first, which I was kind of like, ah, we'll get it done. You know, I was learning behind people like Joe K, Jason Carter. Well, Jason Carter wasn't in corner time, but Joe K, uh, who else was there? Uh, e Bass, Marcus, all those guys. So, I mean, I got to learn from them how to play corner and then 
lo and behold, I got moved back to safety to help out there at the time. So moved there. Then the next year I happened to get to start off a corner again. I think I can't remember. Yeah. I started off again in corner because uh, other people moved in at safety and I was playing a little bit of both sides, actually played some receiver too, which I was very happy about. And then, uh, Got moved back to safety again, and then that last year they let, let me let me play the full year as a corner, which was really good. So, I mean, I got a little bit of everything in the backfield. I played a little nickel in my freshman year, too. So, a little bit of every single position in the defensive backfield. M- Manny, you got to uh, return punts as well and do a little bit of kickoff as well. So, I'm sorry it didn't uh, work out as well as we probably should have. Uh, with some, I blame it on the front line. It wasn't the wedge's fault. Don't worry about that. Uh, but you got you got to let everybody know, uh, man uh, – you, you mentioned it, and I, I want to kind of hit – well, first of all, Reggie, you were one of the earliest, even as an older guy, as a guy that stayed there four years, Adrian Peterson and Reggie Smith were the guys that I saw that weren't going to redshirt the earliest. You were a guy that was going to play early. Man, yeah, look at you, the Jordan shrug. I ain't mad at you, but, I, I mean, know. I don't know what happened, bro, but we was looking over one day like, man, Reggie ain't going to redshirt this. We, we look a couple days in. What are you doing over here with us? What do you do? But talk about that. Just, you know, have the, the feeling that you had about, you know, moving up so early and then uh, returning kicks as well. I want to hear about that. Man, when I came in, I was like, dang. Because, I mean, honestly, I tell this to everybody, you know, the difference between high school to college was 10 times worse for me than college to the pros. Just mm-hmm. because you're going from high school where everybody, some people are at your, uh, you know, your level, but most are either small or short or whatever, not as fast. But when you get to college, like everybody's good and the speed is so much faster. So when I got there, I'm like, man, I don't know. This these guys burning out here. So I gotta try to keep up. But um, you know, I, I did a lot of returns in the high school too. So it was also uh one of the things I wanted to do. So I remember getting there and that first year I it was not punt returns that I did. I did all the kick kickoff. Return. Yeah. I remember Coach Wyatt was getting my ass all the time because I was dropping all of them during during uh, practice. And I was like, man, I can't get this. I'm, I'm stressing out. So but you had to I do it. <laughs> you had remember, man, I got a picture, actually, of the uh, UCLA game when I had you mm-hmm. in there blocking for a little time. Yeah. Yeah. One of those kickoffs, so I remember that. Yeah. But, yeah, I was most of this kickoff return at that point because I couldn't figure out how to catch the dang punt. Yep. Did it help you? I want to hear on this. You mentioned going from corner to safety, safety to corner. Did that help you? Are our guys, and I want to put you on the spot, are the guys that are there now, is it is it a sign of the high school football that you played, that you were so athletic because you played both sides of the ball? Is it our guys that were recruiting aren't that way? Is it they're just not football players? What, what's it going to take? And I know, and I'll just say this, Red, shit. Coverage in college is hard these days. I mean, uh, L- LSU and Clemson was both struggling. So, is uh, it what what's the cap for us? What what do you think we can get to as far as when you you see us turning it around? What type of numbers do you expect to see? What type of plays? Let me know. I mean, I can't give you all the numbers. Right, exactly. right, right. But, I mean, I feel like you know, going into the second year with the new DC and everything in the system, I think they'll be even better. I think because you think about it, I can't remember who's still there that's left that was with the previous regime with Mike and everything. So Trey, he got Brown and probably a safety or two maybe, and that's why right. right. So I mean, you got to think like when those guys that they recruit, the new regime comes in and recruits, they come in, they'll probably be more fit towards their system they're trying to run. Not to say that Trey Brown and those guys aren't, but I think as they get acclimated, you know, get it to where it's one of those things where it's a rolling type of. Uh, system, you know, where you can learn from the older guys because they've been there for three, four years in it. Like, it'll get stronger. And I, I and I think ultimately it's still going to get stronger this year, too, just because the defense did get a lot better. It may not look like that on number on, when you look at the numbers, but again, the Big 12's big, big explosive offense. And so it's just something you got to kind of read through and find your way because it's not the best looking numbers when you look at any kind of Big 12 defense when it comes down to it. Now, I got to give you some credit again. Uh, maybe one of the reasons you played so early was because you were in such good shape. You were one of those guys that were a leader in the weight room. Uh, but legendary story from Reggie was, uh, you know, and I heard it from Joe John, was, you know, the yeah, look at us. It, hey, y'all ain't going to make it. You know, yeah, you know, uh, we, if we see Reggie out early, if we see Reggie out early, there's a problem. And then when he tell us he ain't going to make it, oh, shit, it's over. So when Joe John told me that, I just I started packing. I didn't. I don't even know if I put my cleats on that day. I just said, oh, shit, you know, let me just go and put my flaps on and 
playing on Stairmaster. So give me a little funny, sweetie story. If you could talk about that day, let me know. Man, if the funny thing about it, like, is that a couple funny things about it. The funny thing about it is that the week prior, Smitty set us up. <laughs> I, I don't know if it, like, Lindy and Marcus, they'll tell you, he set us up. So the week before we ran, I don't know how many 200s, about six 200s or whatever. We were all were doing it, doing it, and we killed it. We did it all good. It was me, Marcus, all the DBs, a couple others, can't remember. And we take turns leading or whatever. But the next week, we walk out there, did the same setup. But we look, and it's moved 10 to 15 meters back. I'm like, Smitty, you realize this is further back. But he's like, no, we got a big dog. You got a big dog. I'm like, all right, whatever. So we get the run. I think it's the first one. We get it. The second one, we start struggling, but we get it. The third one, it might have been the third, fourth. I don't remember, but Marcus led it. We get to running. We get around the curve. I'll never forget it. He said, y'all boys better go. I ain't going to make it. And that's why I did all the time. But we start struggling, and then you see Lenny take off. Lenny was the only one that made it from, for, from that group. And we come back to the uh, weight room because we all got kicked out pretty much. Lindy made it, but everybody else didn't. That's when I was like, hey, y'all ain't going to make it. At all. At all. Like you said, I, didn't, I, I took pride in not falling off. I fell off right. that time and another time. Two times. And the other time was when we ran four laps around the football. I couldn't do, like, long-distance laps. That's oh, my God. So, yeah. No, that but that's terrible. what happened on that situation. Yeah, he made us run long distance like twice, and that was the worst days of my life. We had to jog yeah. through campus one day. I'm like, I hope she don't see me. I, she's in class <laughs> with me. I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. I want to hear us about a few things. Uh, when when I left, you know, you were one of the guys that kind of took over the team. Uh, was there something that led you to that? Did you – was it your sophomore, junior year? And then we got to talk about your pro career. Uh, I mean – I think because, I, like I said, I played – there was a couple of guys that played that year, your senior year, my freshman year. So we kind of just were looked about, looked on as, you know, to take the reins and whatnot. But me being me, and I think you kind of know me that way. I'm not the real raw, raw, hey, let's go yelling. I just like to go out there and show you and, you know, follow my lead, you know, type of deal. So um, that second year, I mean, I tried to take on that mold a little bit more. But that third year, I think I did a little bit more because, you know, my, I was a junior, and the rest of the guys that came in were worth junior. So, like, I took more of a leadership role in the aspect of uh, speaking up and whatnot. But I was always kind of that type, only, like, behind closed doors. I wasn't going to be the one, you know, getting everybody in the middle, getting them hyped. That's just not my demeanor. But if it comes to getting getting some plays figured out or getting through a workout, I'll I'll, lead, I'll stand up and lead that just to make sure we all get through it. But it was a good time growing because, like, uh, my, whole, our, my whole class, a lot of us – played early you look at all the receivers on the other side you got malcolm manny and uh, joaquin they all played you know pretty much their freshman year too so and then i can't think of who else uh, nick played a little bit mm -hmm. and then some of those other guys curtis i oh, no, curtis didn't play his first year but, but they, i mean they was, all played was quite practicing, a bit yeah early yeah yeah so yeah. no yeah that, that's that's great stuff uh just if you can talk about your decision i don't know man uh I'm personally of the opinion if Reggie and Curtis and those guys stay. Uh, well, let me ask you this: Does does the Natty? Uh, where were you? Did you watch the 08 Natty? How'd you feel about that? What went into the, the decision before that? Does it eat at you? That whole deal? Let me know. What's what's, what's the question first? Let me. Make well, sure I got so so leaving early, you know, uh, just what went into that decision, and then yep. uh, do you guys did you watch the game? You know, I know you guys were rookies in the NFL. Did you think, oh God, we would have beat their ass if I was there? Uh, you know, or do you look back and just say, hey, man, I made the right decision for myself that? Yeah, I look back. Uh, I think that ultimately I think I still made the right decision. Um, I look a lot of things that went into it was that, hey, like you say, most guys, not most guys nowadays is more common, but most guys don't have get to play three straight years and have that much film going into mm. their senior year. So I felt like I had done I had enough film. I'd done a lot. And the time timing was just right. Um, granted, I was hurt with my toe, but other than that, I think if my toe was a little bit better, I would have been even more ready. But I think having that three years of consistent play, I just felt like the opportunity was there, and that the risk was greater than the you know coming back. I mean, than the going. I'm sorry, just because 
I love love college and love school. I, w- I gave all my all when I was out there. I just felt like, hey, I have this opportunity. I'm projected pretty good. Uh, I'd hate to risk that going back and hurting myself and hurting my business. Not to be selfish whatsoever. You know, I love school. I would have came back. It's just I felt like at that time it was just the perfect timing to go and better myself and, you know, my future. Talk to me about what um, San Fran – oh, go ahead. I was going to say what San Fran was like. I got to know what San Fran was like, dog, because y'all had a good little run out there, and, and you had a good run. Yeah, man, it was – a guy, a kid coming from Edmond, Oklahoma, from Oklahoma General, going to San Francisco to live. Beautiful place. Yeah. Blew my mind. There was so much going, it's so much more fast paced. So, like, going out there from, like I said, Oklahoma type of background, it was just, I had to catch up because it was so, so much, so many moving pieces, whatnot. Great weather, loved it. And there was always something to do. But then to come in with the guys that were already there, yeah, I look back, I'm like, dang, I had a good group that go, come through. You think of Patrick Willis, Vernon Davis, Frank Gore, those type of guys that were all there at the same time. I'm like, man, Alex Smith was there, Ooh. Cap was there. Like, I've had a lot of team, team, member, team members that everybody knows that, like, man, it was just crazy time to be out there. That was. Yeah, it was our first preseason game we played out there. Alex Smith was there. Bless his leg, man. I hope he can at least, yeah. you know, make one game. You can comment on that if you want to because his story is absolutely awesome, man. That injury was gruesome. Obviously, the NFL. Let me ask you that. What would – somebody finds out you played the NFL. What do you tell kids about it? What do you tell kids about going D1? And thank you for the shout-outs, man. When I was doing the gym and stuff, it really meant a lot to me for, uh, you know, everything that I was doing with the kids and everything, so I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, when they when I ask, I mean, I don't get it as much anymore. But I, I say it was a great opportunity. I, I can never say it's not. I mean, they always say, "Why aren't you still playing?" When they see me at work, actually, and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's it's a business. Right. Like, I played. You know, I did my thing, but like, I wasn't the top tier guy. So like, it's easier for a team to get a guy that's you know a rookie coming out than to pay me because I was a vet. You know, four year vested, everything like that. So. I, they, I don't think people fully grasp that, that there is a business side to it. But I, I always say it was a great time. I, got, I met a lot of great people, and I was very, very blessed to get there. And it gave me a great springboard into my career after football. So I always, you know, say you got to make sure you have something to fall back on. Like, you know, you've heard from probably a million people, but uh, just to give it to you all, I mean, I think I, I spent a lot of time invested in it in high school and college just to get to where I was at in the pros. So I I just want to make sure kids understand it's a lot of investment into it and you got to spend a lot of time working on your craft Ooh, otherwise. That's that real. That's real. Yeah. What does the future hold for Rich? Um, we'll see. I, I, I enjoy what I do now uh, to a certain extent. You know, it's my first job outside of football. So it's been a learning experience to be in that real world type of atmosphere other than you know, like sports like whatnot. But um, having to, you know, Get up every day, punch in, punch out. Um, I mean, I'm salary bound now. I have to punch in, punch out. But you know what I'm getting at. Right, right. But I have to do that each and every day. And then uh, just looking at the world a little bit different, you know, seeing the checks not be as large as they were. Yeah, things of that nature. But um, ultimately, I would at some point, whatever that looks like, get back into some type of sports field, uh, mm. sports realm somehow, whether it be, I don't know, just however. I just don't know what that is yet been search, soul searching about that and you know and probably should talk to some of my former teammates like yourself or whatnot and see how that is because that's one thing I do it's one thing I've always known one thing I've done for a long time sports so I feel like you know why not do something that's related to that going that's forward. real that's real I, I'd be blessed to take your call man and we'll end it with this but uh Reg what's it take we we were guys that you were you got there a year after we played for two natties you left a year before we were that we were natty natty every, every you know what I'm saying it's just and, 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 you know, the depth that uh, you guys had defensively, I mean, we talk about all the time, the way you guys were able to rotate, just certain guys, just what's it going to take for us to get back to that? What's it What's it going to take for us to win the national, next national championship? Do you think we can uh, make that jump against the probably three or four teams that we've been up against? What do you think we need to do? Man, I think we are two or three – players away Mm -hmm. i don't know what it looks like could be somebody that's already there but two or three players Mm -hmm. on defense away just those two people that you can count on to rally the troops and get everybody just to be solid mainly because we know the offense is going to roll for the most part 
it's going to roll. It's just like, man, every year they reinvent themselves in a way that, you know, they bring in maybe a different quarterback or a different wide receiver or a different running back, and it just rolls. But on the other side, we just got to get to the point where we can be able to stop somebody and set that attitude that they had back when, like you said, you, your guys were there. You were mm-hmm. like, two people, all them guys, you know, they were they set the tone on defense. Dan Cody, Dusty, all those guys. So, like, that type of – those type of players that can just, hey, get behind them in this role with it. Because <laughs> I think, like I said, offense is what it is. I got I, I got Those guys right there? No, yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a different level of focus. And they they caught you your true freshman year. You know we had the uh, we had the door that didn't shut all the way. So I heard you know some of the things that went on in the meetings. And they B B, B psyched you out one time and made wow, you think man. that that you wait like, what gap you got A gap wrong C gap you were supposed to... <laughs> I mean you know a different level of preparation there ranch. I'm like damn. Yeah, man. They firing shots at red. I can't even be mad at that. Yeah, you got me. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yes, coach. Sold you out. He sold you out. Sold you clean. You got the C gap, right? Yeah. Oh, it's C gap. Yeah, it's like, dog, come on now, man. Oh, man. Just cold, cold world. But, hey, man, Reg, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy, man. Shout out to you and your beautiful uh, soon-to-be spouse, I believe. Is that is that what it's going to be? Yes, yes, it is. She's, so, uh, sh- she's, a, she's a Penn State alum. So okay. Yeah, I don't know how that works. We'll work yeah. on that. We'll work on that. You you probably don't look good. I mean, you know, I, I look good in blue, but I don't know how good you look in blue, bro. So <laughs> so just let me have that. You keep her in crimson. You know, we'll we'll go off from that. So no, nah, I'm just proud right. you, man. But bless you guys, man. Shout out to you again for going, coming to the show. It's gonna be a great episode. Pull back, you brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. No problem. Yes, sir. All right, all right, welcome into Fullback U, and this is going to be a very, very entertaining, very interesting podcast with my brother Carter Whitson. Carter, how you feeling, brother? Man, I'm great. How are you, man? Doing well. Carter, we go way, way back. I knew your dad when he was a coach at freaking Shawnee. He used to give us headaches. Had some great players, uh, Seymour Shaw, Fred Shaw, all those guys. I ain't telling you anything you didn't know because that's guys <laughs> you grew up with. So uh, your brother was a hell of a quarterback, too. You're a great player. We'll get into all that. Uh, but just tell me about your upbringing, bro. Yes, you know, you're exactly right. We go a long ways back. I remember watching you. In fact, I remember seeing you smoke Q Chaney coming across the field. <laughs> I remember watching you play in free safety and, and then watched you at Oklahoma until I got there. But, you know, um, your head coach in high school, Coach Rose, was, I mean, just an absolute godfather of Oklahoma football. So, um, my dad really learned a whole lot from him. We love competing against you guys. Shawnee guy. You, coach yep, Rose, yep. Shawnee guy. So, usually, usually, uh, you know, Carl Albert got the best of us. When I was in high school, I got one year of good luck and, and we got it done. Um, when they didn't, but yeah, man, I, you know, I'm an Oklahoma guy, born and raised, uh, bounced around a little bit. My dad's a high school coach, so kind of followed him around. He, uh, he's now at South Grand Prairie down in Texas. Yeah. He coached, he coached Jeffrey Okuda, who just went yeah, um, number three. Back. So dad, my dad's been down there, followed him around. We were at Shawnee where I won a state championship as a junior playing quarterback and safety. And then he took the broken arrow job, um, just cause you know, that's kind of an upgrade, biggest school in the state. And uh, I went up there, played my senior year, and then ended up walking on to Oklahoma and playing for five years and getting beat up by you and all the rest of the guys. Wasn't there a crazy deal that happened in one of y'all's playoff games or something like that in high school? That was after me. That after was after you. Uh, okay. Billy Brown was my defensive coordinator at Shawnee, and he took over after my dad. And then his son actually, um, they were playing. I, I can't remember who it was. Some 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 dude jumped over the line and grabbed him by the back of the helmet when he was taking a knee and kicked him or something. I don't, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Well, uh, th- there's, you talked about your decision. To OU. Let's talk about, you talked about how you went to OU, but let's talk about what led into your decision. I'm sure you had some small school offers. Um, I'll tell my feelings about walk-ons. I'm going to just give y'all a shout out right now before we even get into that, but just let me know what led to your decision to choose OU. Yeah. So, you know, I had a great senior, or a great junior year at Shawnee. I was all state player of the year. Um, started getting that recruiting buzz a little bit. And then, you know, spring of my junior year, I transferred to, to Broken Arrow. Um, at the time, I had offers from Colorado State, Air Force, and Tulane. Um, so, good. Air Force wanted me to come run the triple option. Colorado State was kind of like, whatever you are. And then Tulane wanted me to come play safety. So, you know, I kind of did those camps in the summertime. Um, and then, you know, didn't, didn't commit anywhere. Just want to kind of keep it open and enjoy my senior year. And in our first scrimmage, I actually tore my MCL at Broken Arrow. And this was back before Twitter and back before, you know, everybody got the word out and, and got the truth. But the report came out that I tore my ACL and actually heard back from all three schools that weekend saying they were full. Damn. So 
Uh, yeah, you, you're exactly right. You know, everybody's got their horror stories. I kind of got bad luck there, but you know, a lot worse things could have happened. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to play at Oklahoma. So decided to walk on there, you know, playing in a state championship, winning a state championship, and then playing a broken arrow and against Jinx and Union and those guys I was like, I really didn't want to go to UCO or, or follow my brother's footsteps up to NEO. I kind of wanted to go see the, the big lights and play in front of 85,000 and, um, you know, fight my way on there. Also understanding, you know, I wanted to coach forever. You know, ever since my dad started coaching when I was in fourth grade, I knew I wanted to coach. So I figured it was, you know, a five-year internship playing for Bob and, and Coach Wilson and Hype and those guys. So, you know, I kind of looked – I had the maturity to look at it. I'm not going to be a great player, but I'm going to learn some really good things and help myself out in the future. That's real, man. Uh, most kids, when they ask me, and I train a lot of kids, and, you know, they, they ask me, they're like, ah, you know, I've got this offer to this D2 school or I can walk on. And I'm like, okay, yeah, take you're taking the offer. You know, there, there's almost, Carter, there's like a it's like a toughness test I want to give them. It's like, can I slap you around a thousand times, have you run six miles and come back and clean my toilets? And they're like, what? And they're like, uh, nothing, nothing, never mind. Talk right. about what it's like. Just, you know, what what's it like to be a walk-on? What's the experience like? Do you guys really have to go above and beyond? Let me know. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's like I just said, I went from being the, the big fish and kind of a small pond to – um, not even being a fish. I was a little bug or something, you know, at, at Oklahoma. So you go from being the dude walking around the hallways, you know, having everything, you know, that, that you've earned and, and being that big dog. And then all of a sudden you come there and you really got to take a step back and you, you got to, you know, take a bite of humble pie and check your ego, just understanding that it's going to be a process to get on the field. And, you know, maybe somebody earns a scholarship, maybe somebody ends up starting, but more than likely, um, you know, you're going to try and fight your way onto some special teams and, and, you know, enjoy it. But, you know, I walked on at Oklahoma and I walked on in, in uh, 2005. And I think there was probably about 20 other guys that walked on with me, which is pretty normal about every year. Well, five years later, I was the only one left. Yep. So, you know, a lot of those guys, a lot of those guys don't stick with it. And I take a lot of pride in that. And a few of them lasted three or four years, but mainly, you know, those guys come from those big schools in Oklahoma, they walk on and they just they can't stick with it they're there for about a year maybe two and then they're gone so it's different you know it, it, being there watching you guys experiencing it it was really cool um and then i fought my way on the field I, you know i could only play if one knee was on the ground so i held some extra points for a few years and got and, and lettered and, and had a had a good career doing that but you know i've seen the walk-on perspective of it from playing and being at oklahoma and then coaching at indiana and it's different everywhere you go um you know, I know in my five years at, at Oklahoma, we were down some scholarships. Um, and looking back, you know, I always think, man, that one of those extra few scholarships when we didn't have them could have been me. And, um, you know, at Indiana, which is not as big of a program as Oklahoma, our walk-on program was phenomenal. Man, we sent we sent guys, you know, Mitchell Page was a walk-on and, and played in the NFL for a year. That's um, awesome. We had, we had some guys like that. And really, the experience at the two different schools was, was really different. But that's yeah. just the type of programs they are, too. You talked about working your way on the field just to give the fans some examples. I mean, you know, when we would have 6 a.m. workouts, the, the walk-ons would have to come in at 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m. and set everything up, come back, do the workout after us, put the weights up, and then y'all would have to go to class while we were already in class. The, the system is not set up for walk-ons to succeed. I'll just say it. I mean, that's just how it is. But let me know, you know, when, and also, you know, you talk about being a holder. People don't realize the interactions you have to have with Bob Stoops on the daily in special teams meetings. Talk about just what what it took for you to literally work your way on the field. No, it, it is. You, you say some things like that, like we were, we were kind of doing the grunt work. and we, were, we weren't quite even my first year. I didn't even get to work with Schmitty and Scotty. You know, they kind of had us with the younger interns and GAs and the strength staff. Um, and, and, yeah, man, we'd go in there and we'd try and finish our workout a little bit before you guys and y'all would come in. Or we'd come in after you, and you guys would be going to eat in the in the scholarship dining hall, and we were going over to the dorms to get our regular paper student paper. dorms. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. you know, there's just little things like that. That yeah, you, you're already kind of behind. Obviously, you know, there's a there's a rhyme and reason for your walk on. There's some scholarship guys, but um, you know, it, it's hard very in the very beginning because you feel like I can't catch up. So I remember just in in my first few years. Um, understanding the walk-on process, you know, I went and basically begged Schmitty, which is looking back, this is crazy, but I begged Schmitty to work out with the scholarship guys. You know, I was like, and I, and I went up to him as a, you know, 
19 year old freshman or sophomore and say, coach, I'm already behind. I get it. I'm a walk on, but I'm going to fall further behind if I'm not working out with these guys. So just understanding that and the fact that, you know, he trusted me and I went in there and busted my tail for, you know, every chance that I could and, and uh, have those same horror stories that everybody else does with Schmitty. And, and uh, but in the same way, you know, that was, that was kind of what, what made me be a great teammate too, is because I, I did understand what everybody else was doing. Um, you know, I'd outwork some really talented kids in there. You're, you, I, I never, I never could fail out of a workout. If I failed out of a workout, Schmidt would be like, all right, you know, you, you go back to the walk-on. Gone right? forever. Yeah. <laughs> gone forever. I, I'll give it, I, I remember one of the first ones, man, I tripped over a bag and I had the fear of God in me. Like, holy crap, he's going to kick me out. <laughs> I'm going to be done. So right. yeah, just doing that is, is different, but because of that, because of how I asked Schmitty to get into it, start working out with you guys pretty early, it really helped me. And, and I think that I think Coach Stoops and the rest of those guys, you know, I had multiple wide receiver coaches with Coach Wyatt, Coach Sumlin, and Coach Norvell. But all, all those guys kind of saw what I did in the offseason, and they, it kind of gave me a little bit more cred just walking into the wide receiver room. Um, but, yeah, you know, Bob knew I was a quarterback in high school, knew my dad. Um he always he ended up calling me Matt a few times. He, he Matt McCoy. Was, yeah, which, you know, Matt was a great player, but a holder. And I thought I took that as a big compliment. Sure. But, you know, Hayes McEachern was a holder before I was. And, and uh, Hayes is a great friend of mine. And, and, you know, kind of after he was done, I, it was kind of the spot that I could get on the field. So did that. And, and uh, I still claim that I'm the – NCAA record holder for most extra points held in one season. I love it. Uh, we'll have to do some research on that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, talk to me about some uh, some popular points or some popular holds, popular games that you remember, the game, uh, series that you were a part of. Now, I, um, you know, I was I – was, first year I was holding was 2008 when we went to the national championship, um, which was my third year at Oklahoma. So you got to picture really me not doing anything in, in, under the lights in front of people for three years. And I remember our first game, I want to say it was North Texas. And um, we go out and, and we score in like three plays. DeMarco caught a bubble and scored fast. Like that game got ugly quick. But we ran out there to hold the extra point. Or, you know, I call the huddle. We do that. We get lined up. Jimmy Stevens, my kicker. We go through all the mechanics and everything. Great snap. Hold. I forget to hold. I forget to move my hand, and I block the kick. I. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Aye. I block. It got. It, it went over by about that, that far. Ah, so, I see. Just those, like I didn't do anything for three years. All of a sudden, I get out there, and, and uh, that was whoa. This is this is new, and and this makes me a little nervous. But it was a good nervous, and made me get back into the rhythm of it. And then, yeah, man, we you know we scored every time we touched it. So I got to be out there on the field quite a bit um, in 2008. Let's hear it. Uh, you got some good Smitty stories. I know you've seen some of the pods, so give me a funny one. Somebody I know you've seen when they broke out laughing, uh, just let me know. So, Schmitty, uh, you know, there's a few that really stick out in my brain. One, you know, my kryptonite, I feel like whenever I was working out with Schmitty, was the ramps. Oh. The ramp, like, I could do it all, man. I could run wh whatever you did, whatever, you know, lifting, whatever we did, I could do. The ramps got me. And I just remember just just the, the the thought process on the ramps was like, you know, we're all teammates and we're all dogs and we're trying to get better, but it's a you got to take care of yourself on the ramps. Man, man for man, <laughs> doggy dog. You see guys slingshotting off of each other to run up. You see somebody hiding on the third ramp so they didn't have to go all <laughs> get back down. Yeah. Uh, no, the the ramps, you know, the, those are cemented in my brain as, as some crazy things, but. You know, I, I had a great group of guys. Um, you know, I was the same class as Joaquin Iglesias, and Manny Johnson, and, and Malcolm Kelly, and, and those are the guys that kind of I worked out with for a while. Q Chaney was a great above me. Uh, so just being around those guys was always fun. Uh, but I had that quarterback mentality, so it kind of helped me out with those guys. You know, they were better players than me, but they, they let me kind of join in because I could, you know, go through the stuff with them and lead a little bit and have that mentality. But, you know, I remember, remember – um, my, maybe my favorite story, I guess I probably should have told this, but it's it's Austin Box and Travis Lewis, and we were on the decline med balls. Okay, so you got the, whatever, the 15-pound med balls that you're throwing back and forth, but you're going decline. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You all got to stay in the same you – know, you know how it is. Go, you all got to stay in the same rhythm. Go, Listen two. To yeah. Every stop. Yeah. All right, so we're on the decline, and I am and I'm I think I was with Hayes, actually, McEachern. 
and Austin Box and and Travis Lewis are sitting right next to us. And we're going back and forth and they blow the whistle to stop. So I stop and Austin Box keeps going and throws the thing, hits Travis right in the head and knocks him out. Wow. Out with his feet locked into the decline. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we're all like yes we get a few minutes to rest <laughs> yeah play it off play it off play it off yeah stay down stay yeah no down. joke oh that's awesome uh, that is fantastic. it was man it was, it was fun the you know the facebook group schmitty built is really you know that is that's true that kind of bonds all of our groups together regardless of what years we were there For real and um going back and listening to bob's book um did you hear it or did you read it? I've seen a little bit. Uh, Coach Stoops' new book. Yeah. So I was on one of my trips down to Oklahoma. I got it on, on Audible, so I was listening to it, and Bob's reading it, which is absolutely phenomenal. That's awesome. You know, hearing his Youngstown come out in, in the words is great. But he was telling stories about, you know, the first staff and how he hired Schmitty, and Schmitty was working and, you know, helping him in recruiting and writing stuff on the board. And it was just kind of – it was fun to hear those stories about those guys that you know I grew up watching. They were my heroes, and then they yelled at me for five years. Mm. And then going back and looking back was was really cool. So you know, Schmitty built is a real deal, and, and uh, you know I'm thankful that I survived it. No doubt, uh, Kevin Wilson doesn't. And any coach uh, doesn't hire smart, uh, doesn't hire dumb football players. You are obviously a very very smart guy. He was a very very smart coach. What was it like working for him in Indiana? What 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 led into that process of you going to coaching? I obviously know that your dad was a coach, but just let me know how you made that transition. Yeah. So, you know, the, the whole deal with coach Wilson was absolute perfect timing, ideal situation. Um, I played my five years at Oklahoma, actually got a medical hardship. So I got to go play at UCO for a year. So I played at UCO for the year. And when we finished our season in November, I came back down and basically was a student coach for, for Oklahoma um, leading up to the bowl game. Well, that was right at the time when Coach Wilson took the Indiana job um, in, in early 2011. So he kind of knew that I was looking, that, that I was you know, trying to get in, get my master's, go to grad school, and um, it, it timed out perfect. He took a job and hired me a few weeks later. And I packed up my trailblazer and drove up to Bloomington, Indiana in, in February of 2011. And, uh, you know, I took a quality control job there, really uh, working with the wide receivers as much as you can, not being on the field. But it was an ideal situation for me because Coach Wilson was the head coach hiring all new coaches, but installing his offense that I knew. Mm -hmm. I come in as a you know a young guy that's never coached a day in his life, but I'm coaching up our quarterbacks coach and our wide receivers coach on terminology and here's how we did it and stuff like that. So it was a really good situation for a young guy like me to step into. Um, I was really fortunate and lucky with that, and then. You know, from there, Coach Wilson was always had his hands on the offense. So we were down an offensive staff member. So as a GA for the next three years, I was a GA by title, but I coached the wide receivers. I had them in the meeting rooms. I had them in film. I had them on the field. I did the rotation. Um, you know, I helped in recruiting. So it was a really, really cool experience as a GA because most of the time as a GA, you know, you're just you're running scout cards and you're trying to do anything that, that – your, your assistant coach needs from you. Um, but I got to be an assistant coach really, you know, right off the bat. So having that experience was great. And then um, after I timed out as the GA, I actually stepped into the recruiting side of it, was our director of recruiting for two years, really got to know that aspect of it and that side of it on evaluation and honestly hated every second of it. Uh, <laughs> that recruiting deal is, is not me. So, um, but it was a good experience and it, it it kind of opened up my eyes that I want to go get back on the field and led me to coach in high school. That's awesome. If you can, uh, Coach Wilson is one of the funniest guys I've ever encountered, especially with football. But he's brilliant with it, and he's so quick. He, he's he's quick witted in like with life and football. Do you have, but by chance, any that won't get him in trouble per se, or that uh, won't get uh, you know that you can edit out some of the censors because he's known for saying a cuss word or two. But, you know, let me know if, if, if any come to mind. No, you know, I mean, Coach Wilson, again, like I said, he, I was around him for 11 years. He, he was my offensive coordinator for five and then my head coach for six. So, you know, I've got too many stories about Wils, but, you know, we'd always joke around with him and, and talk <laughs> about a great guy. Yeah, he can, 
he can rip your ass if he needs to, but he's also a really good dude off the field, you know, likes golfing and hanging out with the guys. Um, we always joke around about Coach Wilson. I don't know if you've ever seen him on the phone, but this is how he talks on the phone, but he's not on speaker. <laughs> can he just hear you that well? No, that whole time, but he's talking. He don't give a crap what you oh, say. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Down the coach's hallway, you know, on the phone with a recruit, we're like, "Coach, man, you might have to do that. <laughs> that's great. That is <laughs> great. No, he's great, man. Just an offensive guru, and, and like you said, super quick witted. Um, whether that was a negative jab to kind of turn me in the right direction, or just a little, uh, just a little love, you know, we'd always ask about the family and, and those things right there. So, really learned a lot from Coach Wilson, and, and really appreciative of, of the opportunity he gave me. Went down uh, after you worked at in Indiana, started coaching in Texas. Let me know what it was like to coach up the Artesians, but ultimately uh, leading get back to Oklahoma. Yeah, so actually Martinsville is up here in Indiana. Oh, is it so, really? Oh, I thought it was Texas. I apologize. Uh, like, no, you're good. My dad's in Texas still coaching. So when when Coach Wilson was kind of getting pushed out um, at IU, uh, I was his guy. I'd been with him for six years, and I kind of saw the writing on the wall of they were getting rid of all Wilson's guys really other than Brandon Shelby, you know, B shells still there. Um, clap but claps now at Alabama, but is, right, is right. he really? Oh, wow. He was there Clapland. for a while. Okay. Um, yeah. Indiana, just their strength coach took the job at Alabama and brought clap with wow. him. Wow. Got so, a shout out clap. That's yeah. awesome. He's, he's great too. And he fits that mold of a strength coach, psycho long hair. With you gotta hair. love it. He's gotta great. love it. You know, he's pure fullback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say he followed you up pretty well, uh, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, yeah. I took over, so I, I was leaving basically Indiana, knowing that the writing was on the wall that I wasn't gonna be a part of the new staff with Tom Allen. So I started looking at high school jobs. Um, I was I was engaged, about to get married, just bought a house. I was kind of staying in Bloomington, Indiana, and we weren't ready to pick up and move cross country, um, whether that was back to Oklahoma or Texas. Um, so I started looking at high school jobs and, and Martinsville is about 15 minutes north of Bloomington in between Indy and Bloomington. And, uh, they were really a struggling program with some great history, but had been bad recently. And, uh, you, know, you took them to the playoffs, just, didn't you? Or to well, a title game almost or something? They, they were one in 19 the two years before I got there. And, and we won six in a row my first year. And the second year we got all the way ranked number two. So we turned it around pretty quick, but, it was a program that needed some some young blood and, and rejuvenation, and, and uh, I got to bring a few guys that I worked with or coached at IU with me, and we really made a, a big difference at a small school. So, you know, I always compare it to kind of like Ada, uh, kind of out there on its own, old school history, um, tough kids, had a lot of fun with them, and, and really, you know, the success that I had there led me to getting a job to where I can come back home. Yeah. You know, I was not just some guy at Indiana. I was a guy – you know, from Oklahoma, coaching Indiana that turned around the program. So it, it's a perfect fit for, you know, what I'm doing now. For sure. Well, now you, you lead into it, man. You're in Putnam City. Uh, how'd you get into that? And I'm excited to see you in the Pirates, man. You guys are super clean with the gear. You did hired a pod regular and Rufus D coordinator. So just let us know. Catch us up on that. Yeah, the, the first thing, the first thing that I have to get used to, and you can see a little bit of in here, this orange. And I, I grew up not I'm not liking this orange stuff, so we'll forgive you. It's it's it's, it's minor, so we'll be it's minor accent. detail. Yeah, wear an orange shirt, right? Right. But I told Rufus he can get some orange on too. That's right. But now, um, you know, Putnam City is a is a place that historically has been really good. Um, all kinds of athletes and um, have been bad uh, recently. They they were one in nineteen. Um, ironically, the two years before now I took over. So, you know, they were looking for someone like me. And with my, me and my wife, we were ready to now look to get somewhere else. And it was just a perfect ideal fit. You know, I knew that I was ready to come home and I knew that I had all the connections to, to put together a staff and, you know, really got fortunate with Rufus, but um, have two of my high school teammates that'll be on my staff and a few other guys that you've probably heard of or known. Thought I had a few more Sooners, thought I had Moses on the staff, but he had to take a job somewhere else. But, um, you know, it was just, it was a true homecoming. If I never moved from the house that I was born in, I would have went to PCO. So awesome. I bounced around, I bounced around as, as a kid with my dad being a coach and stuff. But, you know, if I never moved, that's where I would have went. So I, I did feel like it was a true homecoming. 
they were looking for someone you know, very precise criteria like me that had just turned around a place and I was looking for something just like them. I, want, I really wanted to be in the Oklahoma City area. Thoughts on uh, your offense and defense? What you thinking about running, if you don't mind me asking? What you thinking about schematically? Um, just let me know all that. Yeah, so uh, offensively we'll do – um, basically a dumbed down version of what, you know, Coach Wilson started doing at Oklahoma with Sammy B and, and DeMarco and those guys, Ryan Broyles. And then what we did at Indiana with Tevin Coleman, Jordan good Howard, player. and Cody Latimer, you know, we, you know, we had some really good players. So we've kind of morphed it over the years, but, and then I've gone into the high school level and really dumbed it down and simplified things. And um, my whole offensive philosophy is, is, one, we're going to play really fast. We're going to tempo people. Um, but the whole deal is we're going to go where they ain't, is what we say. So we don't have to look at a 50-50 run versus pass um, ratio. We need to go where they ain't. You know, if they're loading up the box, we need to spin it. And if they're outside and we need to pound it, we need to pound it. So, you know, I think that the perfect balance is go where they're not, go where we can get our players the ball. doesn't really need to be run or pass, just whatever's open. So – in my three years, we were really three different offenses because of the personnel we had in high school. Um, you know, my second year, we had a big running quarterback, and he towed the rock every every once in a while. All he could throw was hitch and go, so we weren't throwing a whole lot. And then my last year, we had a little dude that could absolutely spin it. Um, and I had two. You know, they ended up play. They ended up signing at, at Marion NAI school, but two college receivers playing on the outside. So, and every time we dropped back and threw it, makes so, a big difference. You know, as far as offense is, is you know, I'm going to adjust to who I have. I, mean, I don't get to recruit kids. And you got to figure out what you can do up front. And if you got a fullback or if you got a tailback that can run it, I'll adjust. And then defensively, man, I'm just super excited about the staff so far. Um, you know, there are very few people that have the football knowledge that Rufus does just from you know, playing for BV and working mm. with, with Bob and then playing for the Vikings. I mean, geez, it, now he's going to go – he's a no brainer hire for me. He's going to be great with kids and high energy. Um, so, you know, the, the, the X's and O's of that side of it. I know I'm a, I'm a firm believer in a four man front. I think Rufus is too. Um, but really we, you know, we're going to talk about simplifying things on defense, playing extremely fast and we're going to really harp on attacking the ball. We got to create some turnovers. Um, you know, with, with the team that we're inheriting that hasn't had a whole lot of success, we're going to have to do some things different. So we got to get some turnovers. And we're, we're not going to be bigger and stronger than everybody. So we got to tempo them on offense. Um, but just really excited to get get with those kiddos and, and uh, you know, working with the staff that I've hired. We still have a few more spots to fill. Uh, just uh, I think, you know, we're going to really surprise some people really fast. Man, uh, this is going to be an awesome podcast. And I hate that it, if uh, I obviously want everybody to be healthy, but um, I, I'm, I'm feeling like the Corona's probably set you back in this move, man. Let me know if, if that's the case, how you've been preparing for that. And then also how your family's doing, man. I want to meet your wife someday and I hope your brother and dad are doing well. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, th this whole deal is kind of put fo football into a different perspective of it's, you know, it's not that important, um, when it comes to, you know, health and what, the, what's going on in the world. Um, but it also, I think, it's brought to light how important football will be when we get back to it to get back to the norm. Um, but it has, man. It's it's completely shut me down. I was supposed to start um, at Putnam City High School on March 23rd, and that was right after their spring break. And during their spring break is when they decided, hey, we're not going back to school. And the state's kind of shut down. So, you know, I was supposed to be down there um, living with buddies, looking for a house and getting things organized, hiring coaches. And basically he said, no, if I'm a shelter in place, I'm a shelter in place with my wife in Indiana. Um, so I've been back up here pretty much ever since been down a few times to do some things. I've actually got a house that, that we're, uh, we got a closing date on. So we're excited about that. Um, but you know, all those things during this time and you know, it, everybody knows it are just hard and different. Um, so Putting together a staff has, has been a lot of phone calls, a lot of Zooms, a lot of FaceTime, um, and not really meeting anybody face-to-face. -face. And, you, you, I mean, everybody knows it's not the same. It's hard to control a room. It's hard to get somebody's vibe and get that, you know, initial um, first impression. So it's been different. Um, it's it, We've also – I'm a positive guy, an optimistic guy. We, Me and my wife have kind of turned it into a, a cup half full because it's really helped us slow things down here get our house ready to sell, 
you know, get life in line to basically transfer it cross country. Um, when, you know, if this all didn't happen, I would have been down there in March and she would have had a whole lot more on her plate while I would have been down there just trying to work. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's been a little wild. We, uh, few road trips back and forth just to, to get down there and get things settled in. Um, but we still have a long ways to go, but you know, we think things are lighting up and, and, uh, I'm ready to get with some kids, ready to get with some coaches and, and kind of move past this stage. No, I'm with you. Well, the house is looking great. So tell your wife she did an awesome job. Uh, so I'm sure you didn't have Man. much to do with that. Uh, you know, but don't let me. Nice. Let me know. Let, let's end it with coaching philosophy. You know, I'm a kid. Uh, let's say that, you know, I'm about to enter ninth grade. I'm deciding there's three good schools in Putnam City. You know, there's North, West, and then you at original. What's your sales pitch? What do you want the kid to know about you? What what do you, what do you got for him? Oh, it, it really is, and I think you know the the whole recruiting those middle schools because it's open enrollment freshman year is is a big deal. I know they have some regulations on it. Of you know, I can't necessarily go into North's middle schools that are feeder schools, um, but so you got to do some things different. And and you said it, you know, with the swag, with the the uniforms, with the helmets that we got and the, the colors. We got to create a little bit of a flash of, you know, that's the image that these fifth, sixth, seventh graders want to be when they grow up in that town. So, you know, that's a process that's going to go on for a little while. But because of what I've done, I feel really good about it um, just as being a director of recruiting. Like I've, I've gone through the whole social media things of how important it is and how to connect to kids and, and uh, how to be that program that's a little bit different. And, you know, winning helps everything, but we're going to do some things that are a lot more exciting. We're going to do some things on – social media so these see these kids can see themselves and, and picture themselves if they're younger um, being a pirate when they grow up so you know that's a big challenge for us and you know I'm really missing out on that right now because I was I needed to be down there in March and April recruiting one our hallways but then two just creating this you know atmosphere of Putnam City football and, and kids hey if you're going to enroll in ninth grade you might want to come join on with these guys look who's on their staff and look the kind of things they do. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a building process, but it's one of those jobs that I'm, I'm really excited to be at and excited to kind of build it up into a West side of the state powerhouse. I don't want to be there for one or two years. You know, I, I turned down the Shawnee job to go to Putnam city, Oklahoma. I mean, to PCO. So, you know, I could have gone back to Shawnee and home, but I wanted to take this PCO job and, you know, be at the top level and really build up a program. So, and that goes back to, that goes back to my dad. You know, you asked, I kind of skipped over the question about my family, but that goes back to what my dad's done. You know, he took over Shawnee in, in um, 2000 and by his fourth year, we won a state championship and they were bad, bad. And then he's been down to Texas and turned around a program Richardson uh, where they went 0 and 10 his first year and then went to the playoffs the next three. So it's kind of in my blood a little bit to, you know, take over an underdog place and um, go rebuild it create those relationships with kids and again like that goes back to my dad and, and what my mom did as the cheerleading coach my brother was the older quarterback um you know my wife you ought to see her on a saturday morning she's got blisters on her hands from all the cowbells that she was shaking at Mark. i love it she's freaking greatest fan and and uh she's she's jacked up to be an oklahoma and, and and work with these people and really help build something special so yeah family is a big deal to me it's it's in my blood grandpa was a coach I got my wife, you know, she is now a football fanatic and uh, she wasn't before. So, so we're, we're excited to get down there and start it off. That's awesome, man. I thank you for your time, Carter, man. This is going to be an awesome podcast and I look forward to supporting you brother. Just, uh, and remember two uh, X I'm feeling good, but you know, right. make sure two X. Yeah, I got you. I, don't worry. I'll, <laughs> I'll rock it for you. Two X on the gear. Uh, so don't forget me on that. And maybe a sideline pass or two and I'll be right there, brother. I'll be at every, you know, every opportunity I can. So. It's coming your way. I'll get it to you as soon as possible. You just tell me when we want to go for two and when we want to onside. I'll listen to you. You ain't got to worry about me down your coaching. Uh, I'll, it just, if you give it to the fullback, you did no wrong <laughs> in my eyes. Hell, you know, it works. It doesn't work. If, if anything, it was the line's fault. That's what I would say, you know. So it's never the fullback's fault. I don't know what they're talking about. You're the best. Love the podcast. You're doing great things. It's always good to see some former teammates, you know, face-to-face -face for the first time in a long time. So. Keep it up and let me know if you ever need me back. Will do, brother. Appreciate you. Fullback you.
All right, all right, welcome into Fullback U, and this is going to be a very, very fun episode with my big bro, Keith Sparks. First, Keith, I want to just say happy Mother's Day to you. First sight I saw today after I woke up was a picture of Mama Sparks on John Deere, so <laughs> let me know what's up, man. How you doing? <laughs> man, doing all right, man. I was just, like I said, I was at home with my mom, chilling with her. She put me to work already, you know, for, for a few hours, and turn around and come back to you, and so everything's good, man. Thank okay. you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, for ours, it's a little bit different. Obviously, we lost mom, uh, you know, for when I was in college and, and, you know, those things happen, man. So still got dad and, you know, we had plenty of memories with her. But this show is all about you, brother. I'm glad to hear your mother's doing well. And uh, just let me know, Keith, uh, what you're up to these days. That's what everybody wants to know. Where, where you at now? And I'm down in H-Town, man. Uh, been down here for a good 15 years. Moved down here from Fort Worth uh, doing IT. Uh, I'm a network engineer at a mystery and pipeline company called Enterprise Products. So I'm dealing with uh, uh, designing network communications for plants, admin buildings, and pipelines, all sorts of stuff like that. So um, just working, man. Just working. Everybody, you've had you've been mentioned about five or six times on the pod. Do you still lift? Because everybody's just like he's the strongest dude. He's this. He's that. He's that strong. This blah blah blah. So. You still lifting? What, what's it like? What's it going on? Man, I ain't lift like I used to, man. Shoot, that was oh my gosh, that was that was that was that was some days. Not like I used to, man. I do karate now. Really? Do, I'm flipping the script. I'm okay. doing karate. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, trying to get some of this weight off, but uh, it's not leaving. Back in the day when I was playing ball at Oklahoma, I couldn't gain weight to save my life. I was stuck at two oh eight, but now I'm almost fifty. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't, I don't even go miss. Yeah, I got so, you. Yeah, talk, yeah, I'm doing karate now. Let's talk about right, how, so. before you got to OU. Let's talk about your recruiting. Let me know what it was like. Texas high school football. Um, I hold in very high regard. Uh, what was it like, DFW yeah. area? Let me know. <laughs> um, Are you one of those guys? Texas is Texas football is king. Just get it out. Just get it out. Keep no. it. That's what you want to say. Okay. No. Okay. No. Oh, no, okay. no, no. Y'all were at a certain let's, let's point. I'll give you that. that let's okay. tell the truth about that era. From uh, even the 70s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, folks down in Texas, Southwest Conference was whack. And all the tap, top athletes were trying to lead the state. We were going to OU, O State, Miami, USC. Everybody, everybody in my hood, we weren't talking about staying in Texas. We were trying to get out. And if they did, if they did stay, they went to HBCU, Prairie View, uh, Texas Southern, uh, Texas College, and Tyler, and stuff like that. So now, when I, I, at an early age, when I was twelve, I think, I I, I, I knew I wanted to play at OU. Mm. Living in Texas, wa wow. watching OU Texas game. That's the only game at that time. That's the only game we saw. But I did not want to stay and play for UT. I I wow. couldn't stand. I never could stand UT A and M, and that went afterthought. Uh, that back then you had Arkansas and Southwest Conference. They were a possibility because you know they were balling back then. Um, TCU, no, they were trash. SMU was decent. Texas Tech, they were all right. But yeah, I I, I was about leaving. If I if I didn't go to Oklahoma, it was gonna be Old State or Nebraska. I, I, I was getting out. What coaches did, recruited you from those schools, and then which which ones did you turn down? Which ones did you obviously accept from OU? I wouldn't heavily recruited. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I wouldn't heavily recruited. I think uh, I had one trip to um, Midwestern State in Wichita Falls. I was like, man, forget this. I'm gonna go try. I'm gonna try my luck walking out at OU. So I basically just showed up. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You got to. You got to work. I showed up at Goddard. Uh, and the uh, first person I met on the squad was Larry Ross at the time. And then I, I think I met DJ, Darius Johnson, and all those guys over there. Yeah. So, yeah. Talk to me about what it was like. Campus had to be a little bit different. I mean, I'm sure – I don't know if the bud – we probably had that same furniture that y'all had, the wooden stuff with the – look like carpet on it. <laughs> I don't even want to know <laughs> what's been on those. Yeah, we did. I know. <laughs> I know. Yes, I don't even want to uh, know. I got on. I didn't know anything about college, man. I I I I, I, just, I was the first one in my family to go to college, and so this was like a whole new world to me. But I do. I had to, had to I had to do it. Um, I got there and I had to learn everything by fire, and uh, yeah, literally just learn everything by fire. Uh, starting with 
two of days meeting Coach Proctor. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I heard you heard him before you saw him, probably right. I, hey, I love that dude. Well, he's great. He's awesome. I love that. Dude. He's, he's awesome. Like another he's awesome. Uh, and he and he and he and he instills me how to be even tougher. And I appreciate him. I appreciate him to this day. I, you know, I call him every once in a while. I won't bug him too much. I know he's always out fishing and, and carrying on. But, yeah, um, just learning through him, learning by his being, being around him. Yeah, man, it was just, it was just uh, it was tough. He, he made up some cuss words for me, but, you know, that's okay. It, it all worked out. And another one that was, you know, he didn't have to, he didn't have to yell, but that was Coach Selman. Mm-hmm. He just had that look, <laughs> and that was it. You didn't have, you. He just had that look, and it was like, "Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll whatever, whatever you want me to do, sir. Yes, sir." And that PJ was and then PJ then mentioned that he cleared the sidelines one day, or cleared, cleared every, cleared the I, field, yeah, I was there. cleared the field yeah. to the sideline. Yes, he. Uh, that was a USC game with Curtis Conway, <laughs> William McGinnis. Uh, I don't know what happened, but he. Uh, I think William McGinnis somebody tackled somebody over on our sideline. And all of a sudden, they were swinging. We were swinging, and and, and uh, all of a sudden, Coach Sam just just cleared it out. Now yeah. that's the truth. That's a true story. That. That's that's, that's first we did at a Missouri game too. All of a sudden, uh, there was a fight on the other side of the sideline, and all of a sudden, we were about to clear out and head on the other side. He came right in front of it. Everybody just stopped, and everybody just stopped. Like turn right, right back around. Yeah, mm. we we yeah we that was total respect for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just I I, I totally get it. Uh, Keith, just fun, fun games that you played in, uh, fun memories. I'm sure you guys, uh, you know, you mentioned just uh, talk about the team as well, just the dynamic of how I'm sure you guys, it sounded like you guys were just working so hard and uh, just a tough-minded, gritty team, fighting all the times, what it sounded like. I'm not all the time, but just, just tough-minded. It was a different era, but just let me know. Um. Back then, you know, we were, when I when I got there, we we're just getting our probation, and uh, you know, us as freshmen, we we're just kind of getting a feel. You know, back then we didn't have internet, <laughs> you know, right. kind of tell us ahead of time what's going on, and and I wish I knew better, but I I, didn't have, I never went to any football camps or anything like that. So we, you know, like I said, learn by fire. Um, yeah, everything was tough and gritty. Uh, I was I was surrounded by great athletes. I mean, all Americans all around. So I knew I had to up my level uh, to compete with them and and, and do what I got to do. I, and it started for me in that weight room. Back then, it was Pete Martinelli. It was Blair Prince, mm-hmm. Jimbo, and who else? Uh, 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 Scott Bird. Scotty Bird. And, Talk to him all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they were hard but fair, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and, and they made us work. It's particularly in that off season. Back then, when I freshman year, we had off season at three p.m. Uh, my second year, we went to six a.m. and we've been we were doing six a.m. ever since then. Mm. Uh, it was hard work, and when Joe got there in '93, he he increased it. But like I said, it was hard but fair. I I I I, I and that why that's why I had to uh, start start from there. The fun, funnest games I ever had was 91 uh, Gator Bowl. That was our first bowl, bowl game experience. Um, what else? That USC game was fun. Uh, always te- All the Texas games were fun. Oklahoma State going to – I don't know. It was fun when we went to Stillwater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it was fun going you – know, being in that, that hostile atmosphere. It, it, it was fun. The sidelines were too damn close. Yeah. Way but, too close. Still they, are. They still, they still are. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 um, oh, man, let me see. I'm thinking, uh, that AM and game. I, I missed that AM game in 94 and the Syracuse game because I got hurt. But, uh, uh, that Colorado games, going to Colorado, playing there, that, that, those, those were fun. They, we always played them at night and that crowd was always drunk and, that's back then they were they were tough. Oh back my god. Then. Was that Cordell yeah. and all of them and uh That was Cordell those guys. Yeah. Okay. That was Cordell, those guys. Yeah. Uh that's when the Tommy and Nebraska, those games were tough. Those those were fun, but those were those games were tough. Tommy Frazier and all those guys. Uh and mm-hmm. K State was starting to come along back then. Real deal football. Snyder. Real deal football. Yeah. And so- it was all it was all hard nosed 
smack mouth football. You went in there to bring the bike. So, well, I got to uh, ask you about some of your teammates that have been on here: PJ Mills, Jeff Frazier. Uh, they've incriminated you in a few things, so it's good to see you. You're still uh, free. Uh, so, uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, can you can you tell me some some fun stuff from them, or just what type of players they were when you met them on the visit, stuff like that? So, let me know. Man, I first met. I, well, I didn't meet him, meet him, but I remember seeing Jeff Frazier uh, actually on TV. It was. Fall of ninety one. It was I, I saw them play in a state game, uh, Westmore. And I was like, you know, I, I didn't know who he was, you know, at the time, but I was like, yeah, this, this, this dude can ball. He, he can run. And the following year, I seen him. I, he just shows up. Like, <laughs> oh, that's you. That you. That guy. On, man. Yeah. You all right. We, we used to call him the X Man, you know, because you know he, he was hurt part of the time, but he was he was allowed to practice, and they would give him a, a practice jersey with an X on it. So he became X Man. X Man, and uh, that man—that's that, a harder working man. Ever. Him, he was one of the hard work, hardest working men I ever saw in my life. Uh, I remember this one time with Jeff when I don't know what happened in the huddle. It was '95. It was our senior year, '95. Something happened out in the field. It was on our. We got backed up to our uh, tonight to our to our goal line. I don't know a fight broke out in the huddle or something. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden they set, they they set, they, they got set, and that dude took off 100 yards for a touchdown. I'm like, oh my gosh! And then they came back to the sideline and cussed him. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, he got up with the old lineman or what, but it was, I was like, wow. I have to ask him about that. That's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. I, he'll, he'll if he jumps on, he'll remember it. Yeah, I guarantee. But you uh, no, I had a number high respect for Jeff, and, and PJ was another one. I mean, there's nothing but respect for those guys. I mean, like I said, those those two guys were great athletes, great guys to be around, fun to be around, hardworking. I, I couldn't ask for a better set of teammates right there. Yeah. So I I, I, I could – and that goes for all my teammates. I mean, we, we – heck, man, it's been over 20-some years now, and I can't believe I'm saying it. I feel old, but – That's all right. It's, I'm, yeah, getting, it's, I'm it's, getting there, brother. I'm halfway there. Oh, I'm halfway there. You halfway Shit. there. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it was a lot of these guys. I stand in awe. I was like, man, I I, I really know what I got to do now to, to up my game to be to be on this team here, you know, and everything. And I and I did that, and um, and um, I had those guys to thank. No doubt. You know? Well, and speaking of the guys, you probably want to thank a uh, mutual friend, and I, we got to get into the Facebook Ooh. group. But shout out to Dante Jones, man, uh, our older bro, uh, just always looking out. I, Dante's looked out for me in Dallas. I mean, he is solid, man. I just Daryl Reed. I talked to Daryl on Twitter. Uh, you know, we just he, Keith. We're all passionate. We we we. It's yeah. but it started somewhere, man. And I mean, so just yeah. talk about some of the influence that some of those older guys had on you, and maybe maybe one was Dante. I haven't met Dante yet. I always talk to him on Facebook, but I, wow. he was one of the guys I emulated before me. He was five years before me. So, uh, yeah, he's my big bro. Uh, Jamel Holloway, you know, I I, I, um, I I used to coach with him with the football camps in Creek Nation over in Clearview. Oh, no, over Skill, over in Walika and all that. Uh, those guys, just being around them, you know, you, 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 you just pushes you to get better. You know, and 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 do the right thing, and and, and 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 get all your ducks in a row. They're just great guys, man. It's just um, you learn from their success, and you also you learn from their mistakes, and, and you just grow with them, man. Yeah, just grow with. Them. Yeah, you know. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you. Uh, speaking of growing and development for you, did you pledge in college? Uh, what what decided? What made you decide that factor? And then uh, did that have anything to do? Did, did somebody that you meet have a grill? As a Q dog, or what? I mean, because I'll be seeing you grilling all the time. Let me know. That goes back to high school. I, my my high, one of my high school football coaches, uh, coach uh, Wayne Pollard. He uh, he was a Q, and I yeah he came in my sophomore year of high school, and ever since then, I don't know I don't know what's about it, but it, 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 it I, I wanted to join that organization. It was something I in my heart that I had to do. And um, when I got to college, you know, I, I set out to make that my goal is to go ahead and, and play as Q and become a bruh. 
And it's one of the best things I've ever done in my life. I mean, it, o, OU football is number one in, in the bros, you know, and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm just surrounded by brothers, you know, and, 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 and we all help each other out and, and during those times. We all talk to each other. We all we're all there and we, we need each other most. So it, it was a good thing. Um, as far as grilling is concerned, I don't know when we was living. Even before I was a player Q, we was always grilling something. Um, and I guess I got my grilling technique from my mom because she had my old, my grandfather's old cook stove, and she used to be out there cooking and smoking ribs and all that type of stuff, and it just kind of stuck with me. And I got this old, this old uh, 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 pit, this trailer pit that I drag up to Oklahoma uh, uh, once or twice a year to do tailgates. I, I, I don't know. It's just I enjoy cooking good food and bringing people together and everybody having a good time. Mm -hmm. and putting in my work to make sure everybody else is, is happy, satisfied, and, and, and we just, just chill. And that's, to me, that's what it's all about, you know. Um, I, I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, I, I, I like for us as alumni, football alumni, mm -hmm. to get together one day and, and grill together and have a good time the same way. Um, I do it for the bros all the time. Uh, and it's just fun. It's just fun. It's hard work. There have been times I've been grilling. I'll probably be up 24, 48 hours straight. Yeah, just grilling. But, well, I, I had a lot of uncles that were Q dogs growing up. So even playing uh, just basketball with them, I got to hear a lot of the the yells and things like that, yeah. and the signs and dances and things like that. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people are uh, one. I thought some of the best athletes were Q dogs, so that was one thing. But I think on the other side, you know, y'all want running around with your tongues out, throwing uh, that with everybody, everybody. Oh, you know, that may not know what to expect. Uh, but I, I, again, me, uh, there's been some people that were cute dogs in my life that it were just very, very influ influential people, yeah. great people. Can't say enough. I gotta say too, I've seen just between like you and Corey Bennett in our Facebook group, just how it just doesn't, yeah. it, you don't even miss. It's like y'all are apart, but then it just, y'all are exact the same and it, there does, there's no separation. Like there's certain things he can say to you, you can say to him. So I really admire that. Um, just want, want to get into, uh, again, we, this is going to be a great podcast for everybody, but uh -huh. I, I want to get into, uh, the Facebook group. I thank you for adding all your friends. You and Jeff have made that thing really, really go. And it hasn't always been fun. It hasn't <laughs> always been, uh, it hasn't always been, um, I know civil, <laughs> I but know. man, it's been it's been memories. It's been tying people together. It's been a brotherhood in there, and it's. Yeah. I think someday, hopefully, everybody can see. Well, let, let me ask you what What does it mean to you to be able to log on uh, each day and be able to see four hundred and five of your brothers on there? It's just good, man. It's just good, and I, I okay. This group that we're in, it goes beyond football. Mm. It goes beyond, and you know this, <laughs> it goes on to everyday life. And we all want to agree. Sometimes, yeah, we'll get mad. We'll get extremely mad. But it's it's a place where you can share. You can be yourself and, and voice your opinion and, 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 and and move on from there. You may not agree with it. You may, you or you may. That's cool. Or it's also a place where uh, someone needs help. That so we can collab, we can collaborate, work together, and try to provide this person, their family, some type of help. And it, it, because this this life's a journey. Man. It's not a race; it's a marathon. And even though you know, we may have some folks that. You know, for a while they 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 you know they're they're independent. They do their thing. They're gonna need some help every once in a while, you know every once in a while. And we do what we can to help each other out, man. Yeah. You know. Uh, you've helped so me. That's... You've even helped me. Uh, you know, when I have my gym, bro, I, I ain't even gonna act like you you didn't. Uh, uh yeah. so I, I gotta thank you for that. I gotta get your thoughts on the current team, uh, Keith. We struggle. We we. You and I, I think, just from your words, I think we are both guys. I've seen you say 
that making the playoff is not an easy deal. Winning the Big 12 is not an easy deal. It's to be re- it's to be commended. It's to be respected. But I think yes. we also see eye to eye on there's still a gap. There's still a wide gap. What is the gap? Toughness? Is it recruiting? Is it what do you think? I okay. On the offensive side of the ball, I'm not too worried. Uh, uh, that, start with the offensive line. I like how I don't want to miss mess up his name, Coach Bendon, but I like how he recruits old linemen. <laughs> I mean, he gets some dogs off in that old line. Yeah, I'm not – I'm worried about our defense. Um, we we were at one time defensive tackle you. Mm. And it starts with that front seven – I mean, that, that, that front four right there, or three, four, whatever you want to do. But it starts with that front. We got to We got to find those dogs. We got to find those dogs, or we have to develop what we got into dogs, or or or, or more dogish, whatever you want to call it. And the defense last year, a whole lot better. That defense, and nobody can tell me different. That defense we had this past year, we would have, we would have, we would have went. We would have, we would be the it would at least compete. Well, now we would have beat LSU, I believe. We would have beat LSU. Granted, yeah, they had their everything all, all cylinders. We just need a little umph. I believe uh, last year when we had Kyler and the year before, mm-hmm. year before we had Baker. Right. We just need that little umph. Uh, a few turnovers win. a game. Few few stops yeah. a game. Few three four stops a game. And I think this defense this year would have provided that in years past. Now I'm not and I'm not trying to knock yeah, yeah. anybody or not, but it, it just we just need that little. We just need to get over that heel, and I think we would have had that uh, this year with LSU. I'm gonna I'm 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 back up some. I said we were gonna beat him this year. I'm gonna back up. I know what you, what you, you saw. You, if, if we how... had that defense, you meant if we had the defense for, for two years ago with Baker and Kyler, with that offense yeah. combined, then we, yeah. I got you. We would we would have we would have we would have won two NCs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We would have won two NCs, but this year it seemed like the the, the gap wide because. Um, I don't know those those boys, and I I can't stand LSU because I lived there in Southeast Texas, and we I'm, I'm surrounded by LSU team, you know, alumni. <sighs> I can't stand them, but they were good. They were awesome. They were good, and, and and we need to step it up ten notches. I I, I want to beat the ass. No, all right, look at them, and I can't stand Clemson, but uh. I don't know. Me and you talk about how we need to how how we need to uh, recruit better uh, as far as the particular defensive line stuff like that, and how we got to get those boys. You know how we got to get some of the best talent out of Texas as best we can, and, and how they, we we we're not going to be able to get them out of the SEC. And that's Keith. Well, here's the deal. You said it. Y'all were D tackle you. So wherever the best D tackles were, y'all were getting. And likely, yeah. to me, when we were growing up, Texas had guys that were top five in the nation, top ten in the nation. It ain't like that no more. It ain't like that no more because, unfortunately, Texas high school football turned into a dog on seven on seven. And in order to compete with seven on seven type teams who have like five wides all the time and uh, what, no tight end, whatever, whatnot, because there are, there, there's always a, 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 a snap a snap on downs and, and they're throwing the ball and they're tr- tr- trying to hurry up, no huddle. <laughs> and they're, in order to compete with that, you got to have defense alignment that are not as big. Fast. Or not, as, not as fast, whatever, whatnot. Gotta they got to be in position. Mm-hmm. And using that same concept of going against SEC teams, you're not going to – in the playoffs, you're not going to be able to withstand it. You're not right. going to be able to do it. You know, you got to be able. You got to have that beef. You got to. You got to go smash now. Right. And a lot of the top defensive tackles that are coming out of Texas, they're going straight to A and M, or they're going to Alabama, or whatever. Why not? They're not staying in Big Twelve. They're, they're leaving. That's what I'm worried about, Keith. Is if the best players in the nation are in that position or in the Southeast, we either have to play against those guys. Well, yeah. first of all, if if, you, if you're saying we can't out recruit them, I agree. We have to play those guys in order to be in their state and to get those guys traveling to family, family traveling back and forth. 
Yeah. Or we have to be playing somewhere near them to where they're going to be interested. Or we have to be on TV with them somehow playing well against them. We don't have any of that right now. And that's what worries me. And when I say, and you and I, that's again, I think some people will come off when, when they hear recruit better. Just by changing leagues, A&M started recruiting better. <laughs> you know, they started recruiting a lot better. Uh, Tennessee's recruiting right now. Have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah. But they just don't know what to do with it. That, that, ain't, that ain't right. But that ain't Kansas or Iowa State or Baylor. Yeah. You know what I mean? And where and that's what scares me, Keith, is our our other teams in the league where I'm yeah. done carrying this league. I'm done. I'm tired of it. I'm, I, we, we had that whole deal with the Texas Network. It didn't work out. They wanted their money. That's fine. We're still getting our money. That's fine. Winning the Big 12 doesn't mean that much anymore. It doesn't. And unfortunately, Keith, what the NFL draft, right? That's sign one. You know what yeah, sign, sign to, to me? What's going to be the the the, the sign that's good that people need to p- pay attention to? Yeah. The playoff committee. Playoff committee. We've been we've been blessed. Don't get me wrong. We've been blessed, but they're going to get tired of that. Gonna, that's what I tired. think. That's what I think. Because we got to we got to win. We got to win. We got to win playoff games. And if we they're seeing to- if they're seeing Bama lose by a touchdown. When they see LSU or whoever they, if, if, you know how it is. If Bama keeps it close, they ain't gonna have to make it to the end. And it's gonna be two teams. We mess around. It's gonna be three teams in Ohio State. One or you know, two two SECs, Ohio State and Clemson. And yeah. I mean, and technically, Ohio State got cheated. I'm with you there. But <laughs> hey, there's another deal. Keith is they're killing in Texas and Georgia. They're killing in recruiting. Ohio State is killing. Look at their NFL draft, what they did. I mean, with, with Burrow, uh, Burrow was almost there. He transferred. Yeah, they would have the top three picks. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. lastly, Keith, I, I, I'm not – well, I'm not bagging on – I'm not bagging on Oklahoma. I'm from Oklahoma. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I want no, us no. to recruit Oklahoma kids. I think there's some, some kids. There's a kid in Bayern we need to offer, in my opinion. Uh, there's a we kid. got a lot. Oklahoma, Oklahoma has a lot of DBs. Oklahoma DBs. and we need DTs. We we yeah. when, when we were D tackle you, y'all could yeah. come, come to y'all could get those top guys in Texas, and then y'all could come yeah. up to Oklahoma and get some formidable players, players you could insert and make dogs. And right now we don't have that in depth. We got the guys. We got we got the high guys. We got some talent, but like you said, we don't have that depth. Right. And and uh, uh, defense attack. I was looking on uh, rivals, and I was like, there was this one dude at Louisiana. He was like, I guess six Mason, four. Mason Smith or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something's the name. I follow it. I'm hoping we're putting our hat in the ring and recruiting this dude, going to his house, doing whatever we need to do to talk to this guy. I I, I know it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible to get him out of Louisiana. But there's always that hope. I'm with you. <laughs> that, those are the guys we need to go after. I'm with you. you know? Oh, we need to find them. Maybe we can find one or two, a few of them in Texas somewhere. I, I don't know. Uh, I wish Oklahoma only got three million people, and I wish you could find them in state, I you know, know, like that. A you lot know, of our big kids a lot of times play offense these days, like I say. Yeah. I mean, you. We a lot of teams have gone to three-man front, so you only got one defensive tackle out there. We're thin. Yeah. De- I mean – you know, some of our powerhouse schools have split up up here compared to, you know, back yeah. in the day where they, you know, so it's a little bit harder to recruit up home. Bottom line, Keith, when you judge our roster based on other rosters, it's too spread out. OU's roster has 22, 23 different states on it. Other states, other schools, Clemson is the majority four or five states. Alabama yeah. is a majority five or six states. They sp- expand out a little bit more. You know, Georgia, two or three states. That's yeah. it. And, you know, people laugh at Georgia. But for me, when you talk about sustainable uh, LSU, uh, two-thirds of their guys, uh, Louisiana, a third of their guys, te- or not even a third, but it's like uh, most of their guys, uh, close to two-thirds, three-fourths of them, Louisiana and Texas. Louisiana. They, they don't have to leave. They might grab a dude out of Alabama, but they'll come to Texas, get a few more, and but they'll just stay at home. And our, right. our, our, our roster still looks the same. It's still 40 guys from Texas. 30 guys, you know, 25 from Oklahoma, and then there's just one, two, two, one, 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 one from every other state. 
Yeah. To me, yeah. that makes it so much harder on our coaches to do what you say, Keith, and go into that D tackle. And instead, it, we should be doing this, what you just said. It should uh -huh. be Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana. Point blank. You should be able to fill your team, in my opinion, with that. Like there should be enough pool and talent at the, at the University of Oklahoma to get that or to be in on any kids you want around there. But yeah. unfortunately, man, with, with every factor with the we just dang key, it's just, it's, it's tough. But I want to get your thoughts on this. We got a few, I'll give you a few more minutes. I know you're busy, man, but I appreciate your time. Yeah. I've saved this for the end. Okay. So you can comment as little as you want, as, uh, as much as you want. Okay. Been some shit going on in the world, Keith. Oh, you're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're my big bro. I appreciate how you do post and what you do say, uh, anything you can comment on. Pretend yeah. uh, I'm your younger bro, and I'm just coming to you to ask you for advice. What's going on in the world? What do I need to do better? Um, I, if, I, if I'm just focused on my son and raising him and and, and trying to da 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 what advice will you got for me, big dog? Continue to be the good person that you are. Continue to do good, man. Just continue to elevate yourself, your family, elevate all your talents, and just be that just just be that good, genuine person. There are going to be times, yeah, you're going to have to speak out, and there are going to be times you have to speak out on issues, and you're going to have to uh, just say no. This is this is wrong. Uh, a lot of things that we're going on right now, like number one with this pandemic. You can't sit up here and wish a virus away, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you know, and if these, and not only the scientists here, but all these scientists around the world, they're, they're telling you how contagious and deadly this thing is. I, that's where I rely, you know. That's where I get my expertise. Now, Grant, I, I don't want to see all these people being laid off. No, I hate them. But there's got to be a balance there. And, and we, we need to listen to our expert experts. We don't need to li listen to stuff on, we don't need to listen to conspiracies. I, we don't need all that. We just need to listen to the experts and do what they need to do. Uh, even before that, stuff with uh, immigration, all that good stuff, man. Uh, I don't know, it's disheartening with some of the things that we're seeing. Um, I was about to talk about immigration, but something stopped me. I don't want to get into all that. But yeah, right. just be well, I want to hear uh, your thoughts again about Arbery. That's what I was going towards. Uh, I mean, just the guy should still be alive. And I don't know if you even want to really even get into the Sean Reed deal, but he should really be alive. But what just what's your thoughts? <sighs> Those two dudes would not be in jail if we hadn't seen that video. Hmm. And that's the stone cold truth. They're gonna let that dude get off. They're just gonna let those two guys get off if, if, if the best way they could. And because it had it took what was it the, the Georgia Board of Investigations to go arrest him, not the local PD. And it just tells you that still we need justice justice reform. You mean um, you mean you and me couldn't go do that, Keith, and get away with it? Heck no. You know, they put us, we'd be locked up that day. Just making sure. <laughs> we'd, we'd be locked up that day. And if, if, if we lived, if we lived, uh, all these folks going to the state house with AR 15s, whatever, whatnot. Black Panthers did that in the 70s up in California. And the next, next day, the NRA said, we need gun control. <laughs> Interesting how that works. Uh, so now, and here we have the same NRA today saying we don't need. It. So we just walk around with AR-15 trying to intimidate folks. I mean, I'm not trying. I'm not advocating for violence, whatever, whatnot. But I mean, if they if they continue and they mess around and make a mistake and hurt somebody, it's gonna bring that smoke on. Yeah. We we just. We, I don't know. I, we 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 just in a bad place right now, and I feel that um, folks need to get out and vote. Um, November, which they should have did back to in 2016, and and get the current uh, chaos out of our uh, our White House here. Oh man! And, 
and and and, and to grant unfortunately some of the damage he's done is going to last us a generation um because the world has seen um our underbelly it has seen the foundation of racism that has started with the, that, that that's that's been with us since the beginning and um it, 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 you know, it, it, it's things that back when I was at OU, it's things that you didn't see, but you kind of knew it was there. You felt it. You felt it, but you was hoping that as time went on, it would, it would go in the past. It would really, it would really, but it would really, it was just, you know, it was like, when was it? It was like 30 years back then since Jim Crow. And you would hope that, you know, that's back then. We can move on. We can do better and, and, and keep on uh, advancing. And, and all of a sudden, I'll see another person of a different race, you know, just as a person, which I've always been taught. But now, it seemed like since your buddy, 45, got in office, you uh, you see what's really in their hearts. And it is um, – to some degree, it hurts, but after a while, it, after a while, all that hurt it, it starts to turn to anger, and 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 for me, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you could do with that, man. Um, knowing that this person chose to elect this person or vote for that person, knowing that they've done all these atrocities or or or, or whatever whatnot against people of color, what does that say about me? I got to say this, Keith, um, and, you know, I was I was very because you and I don't want to put words in your mouth. You're not trying to make anybody of any other race feel differently. Oh. You're 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 explaining how you feel. And I was I was I was glad to see a large majority of people come to a mod Arbery's defense. White. Black, and, 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 I was I very hard. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and let me be clear. Growing up, because my mom, you know, my mom, she would always tell me, you know, always accept by who they are. You know, it don't matter what color they are. It don't all that good stuff. And yeah, I, I've carried that with me throughout my all my whole life. Uh, when I see a person, I I I I I'll I'll, I'll, I'll start. You know, I'll, I'll just see him as a person. I don't see him anything. I don't care what whatever. But, Whatever it is, but all of a sudden, I've been in a situation where all of a sudden they start asking. You know, someone was asking me like, they can't look past my color, and it's like, okay, I, I can look past yours and just see you as an individual. But why, why, why must I my 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 appearance all of a sudden come to this conversation? Let's keep having, you know, let's just just keep it straight. Um. How can I put in the words? It's best I don't, not on this, but. Well, uh, again, I, I've seen plenty, Keith. I know your heart, man. And I know, you know, there's there's going to be some people out there offended. I, my, my deal is I just, I do what you say. I just, I train kids. I, I teach <laughs> kids. Um, when something of that nature comes up, um, I don't even. I get through it with kids. And for me, there's not a left or right. There's not a black or white. So I, yeah, I realize yeah. there is, but, um, you know, for, for, for so many of my kids, they take me back to, um, they talk too much Keith. I mean, that's what I'm dealing with. You know, they can't, they don't bring pencils and paper to class, you know, or even if I do have a college kid, I'm, I'm dealing with, uh, you know, probably some of the same issues y'all was dealing with too many girls calling their phone. So, you know, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but fin- go ahead and finish it off. Keep- go ahead and finish it off. Let me know. <sighs> nah, man. It's just, it's just, <sighs> just continue to do, to be the best you you can be. And that's all, that's all I'll tell these young folks, you know, and, 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 um, and, uh, when you see something wrong, speak up and, and address it right then and move on from there. Sure. And uh, and uh, and we get out and vote. 
and uh, I don't know. We um, we got a lot of work to do as as a, as a, as a nation. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot of work. To do. Man, this is going to be an amazing episode, Keith. I appreciate you for your time, brother. May I add a few highlights for you and uh, get it going for the for the for my older brother, Sooners, man. Thank you for everything. Hey, you take care, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. Will do. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. See you. Bye. Appreciate it, big dog.